So folks, we're picking up with these videos, uh, working on exact ODEs, and we worked with this example previously, and I went ahead and suggested the solution to it, and we verified that it was a solution, after we, of course, confirmed that this was an exact ODE. And then, you know, the, the next question is, is, well, where on earth did I come up with that solution? How did I come up for that, with that psi of xy? So here's a very methodical way of computing that. So first of all, let's just note because we said this on the previous page, but it was in a previous video, so let's note the ODE is exact. And you could check that again uh, by confirming that when you take the partial derivative of m with respect to y, you get the same thing that when you take the partial derivative of n with respect to x. So you could check that. In fact, let's, let's go ahead and check that uh, using this shortcut technique. So if I take the partial derivative with respect to y of y cosine x, plus 2x e to the y, we get that this is equal to just the cosine of x plus 2x e to the y. And if we take the partial derivative of this expression with respect to x, so if we take the partial derivative of the sine of x plus x squared e to the y minus 1, well, we end up with, let's see, the partial derivative of sine of x with respect to x is the cosine of x. The partial derivative of e to the, x squared e to the y, well, e to the y gets treated as a constant, so we just get 2x e to the y. And, of course, the derivative of a constant, regardless of the respective variable, is always a 0. And so, sure enough, these two expressions equal each other. I mean, we've shown this, we've shown this, so, yep, we do, in fact, have an exact ODE. So the next thing I, we want to know is how are we going to go about solving this? And the trick is to integrate... Um, uh, each side, or, or integrate one of the uh, two component functions, and then make some adjustments as necessary. So I'm going to go ahead and take the antiderivative of y cosine x plus 2x e to the y. I'm taking the antiderivative of m sub x dx. And why am I doing that? Well, because how did we get m? We got m by thinking of it as being, remember that for our psi of xy, uh, we had the partial derivative of psi with respect to x here is equal to our m, and the partial derivative of psi with respect to y is equal to our n. So if I've got m and I want to get back to psi, I could, it makes sense to integrate it. And we'll go ahead and do so. When we do so, let's see here, integrating this with respect to x would give me, let's see here, the integral of the cosine is the sine, so we get y sine of x plus x squared e to the y. And then what I have to do here is normally, so normally uh, in integral calculus, you'd put a c here, right, to stand for some as yet undetermined constant. But here's the thing, because this is, we're trying to get back to a multivariate function, we need to think of that c as, even though it's a constant as far as x is concerned, it could have y's in it. It could be some function of y. So I'm writing this as c as a function of y. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate this expression with respect to y. So now we're going to take the partial derivative. So this is kind of funny. We, we started with our m. We integrated it to get what we think of psi up to a constant in terms of y. Then we're going to take the partial derivative of that to get back to n, and then we're going to compare. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. So I'm going to take the partial derivative of this answer now with respect to y. So the partial derivative with respect to y, let's see what that gives us. So we take that partial derivative, we end up with just the sine of x, plus that's still just x squared e to the y, plus c prime of y. But what is that supposed to be equal to? That's supposed to be equal to our n of xy. If we set the n of xy equal to that expression. So we've got sine of x plus x squared e to the y minus 1. That needs to equal the sine of x plus x squared e to the y plus c prime of y. That means that by position, this must be equal to this by a positioning argument that we make over and over again in this class. So we know that our c prime of y needs to be equal to uh, negative 1. Well, that enables us to solve for y, or for c 
of y. So integrating both sides gives us that c of y needs to be equal to negative y plus some other constant. Maybe I'll put a little c there. And so early on, as soon as I had integrated m with respect to x, I almost had my entire answer. I was just off by some function that depended just upon the variable y. And then by differentiating that answer, and then making a positioning argument, and then solving for what that unknown function of y had to be, we're done with this problem in that we can now say that our solution is y sine x plus x squared e to the y, that we already knew, plus we just learned that we could think of this as a negative y. I guess I should write minus y here. And then this equal to some arbitrary constant is how we give the solution to this. So our, this is our psi of xy that we just solved for. And that is this is how we represent in green what I've circled there, the, the solution. Just to confirm, um, actually it's on a different page here, just to confirm that is what we checked our answer to be when we earlier verified that this was a solution to the differential equation in, uh, in this differential form. So again, the techniques for doing that, th for doing this procedure, are one, confirm that it's exact. You do need to do this. This technique does not work if your equation is not exact. Then to simply integrate one of the component functions with respect to its variable. And then rather than writing a c here, like you usually do, you write c of, and then the, it's a function of the other variable. We'll get a chance to practice this more in class, but hopefully this gives you some insight as to where we're going with this. Thanks for your patience, and I will see you. Oh, let me just say this. So now we're going to shift gears to other various substitution techniques. So for number 12, I'm going to let you do number 12 on your own. It's simply example one from your textbook. So just go ahead and copy that example out of the textbook there, making note of what questions you have. And then when you move on to uh, the following questions, you'll have uh, videos to help you with the following ones. So I'll see you in the next video. I hope this was helpful.